puppy to heal with good focus is not easy for most people. This puppy, whose name is Tonka, and his eight litter mates are only nine weeks, four days old. And look at the focus on him. In this video, you can get some tips on how to get your puppy to heal like Tonka. And if you already have a Summerbrook puppy, this video will help you to continue the training. If you are considering getting a Summerbrook puppy sometime in the future for yourself, I'll be covering such things as our training philosophy, what we train in the healing portion of our program, and what you can respect with regard to healing at certain ages. As we watch the next puppy, whose name is Mars, I'm going to address some questions that many have who are considering a Summerbrook puppy and are trying to decide if they want to pick their puppy up at 10 weeks versus 11 weeks. There are three big differences in the level of healing training between 10 weeks and 11 weeks. First of all, at 10 weeks, most of our puppies will need reinforcing more often. Secondly, 10-week-old puppies left and right about turns will probably not be quite as crisp as Mars or Tonka's. Thirdly, 11-week-old puppies will be able to do what is called a finish. Most 10-week-old puppies will not. A finish is where puppies will go from facing in front of you to sitting at your side in response to a verbal command and or a signal. This letter is ahead of schedule with regard to healing. This video is an example of what we do at our best. In fact, as you continue watching this video, you'll see that some of, in fact most of, the puppies are even better than Mars and Tonka. Most of our puppies take until 11 weeks to heal like Mars and Tonka. However, you can take a look at our videos of this litter at eight and a half weeks to get a good idea as to what you can expect from a 10 week old puppy at a minimum. Even at eight and a half weeks of age, this litter was incredible at healing and a good example of many of our 10 week old puppies. You can find a link to this video in the description below on YouTube and on our website. While we are watching this next puppy, whose name is Jasper, we're going to talk about the fact that our puppies are healing off-leash. We don't use the leash for training at all. The leash, for the most part, is something the puppies are trained to ignore and is used only when out in public or around traffic. Our puppies walk next to us because we train them to want to be where we ask them to be, not because we are dragging them along with a leash or popping the leash when they don't comply. Our goal in all our training is to mold our puppy's characters to want to work with a person. We actually make a game out of it. We start our puppies working off-leash at a very young age. In fact, our puppies begin off-leash work before they are even seven weeks of age. Our next puppy is named Piper, after her mother. One thing you might have noticed about Piper, as well as the first three puppies, is that we spend a great deal of time practicing about turns, both to the left and to the right. Both turns require a puppy to master very different skill sets that help produce a tremendous amount of focus and self-control. Turning left or on the inside of a circle, in particular, is an excellent exercise in self-control. In order for the puppies to turn on the inside of a circle, they must slow down considerably. Turning to the left also requires a puppy to pull their hind end around in such a way that it's difficult for most puppies, who at this age can be rather clumsy. Most puppies learn this skill first by jumping backwards to stay in position. We do a lot of inside circles with puppies that tend to forge ahead as it forces them to slow down. Now this section of the video is showing Piper healing down our driveway. Piper loves to heal. She is one of those few puppies that will heal occasionally for a long time without getting a reward, as is demonstrated here. There are several puppies in this litter who will heal for longer periods like this. We will discuss more about these longer heals later in this video. Next we have our happy, bouncy little Iris who loves to work. The first thing you probably noticed about Iris is that she started out jumping and being rather out of control. I ignored it, told her in a calm voice to sit, sit and we moved on after she gained control of herself. Had I punished her or said no, or displayed any sign of anger or frustration or even disappointment, I would have been stifling her obvious desire to work. Telling Iris to sit was sufficient. She settled down, gained self-control, and began to focus. Give a puppy an alternative behavior, such as sitting, to an unacceptable one, such as jumping, and there is less confusion and more motivation to do what you want. With these more active puppies, we work hard to teach them to maintain self-control, not only to keep them from jumping when they are excited, but also to teach them to stay next to a handler without forging ahead. 
As you can see, we're work working with Iris on inside circles, walking very slowly, and backing up. All of these healing exercises go a long way in building self-control in an energetic puppy. Punishment-based training often kills drive while it is killing energy. Our goal is not to kill the energy, but rather to teach a puppy to control their energy and to channel it away from undesirable behaviors into something that is more appropriate. Next, is Iris healing up our driveway. Most of our puppies are not able to maintain the kind of focus that Iris is demonstrating without a reward. Not for this much time, even at 12 or 13 weeks. However, we practice on the driveway with all of them to some extent, though with more reinforcement. Healing in different places and under a variety of circumstances is important. You'll notice that at the end of the healing session, Iris forgets to sit. I do not repeat the sit command, rather I simply give her a chance to remember what she's supposed to do on her own. If a puppy figures out what they need to do without help, they will tend to remember it better the next time. Leaves were blowing around which contributed to her forgetfulness, causing her to be distracted. Puppies need chances to take in new things in their environment. Iris had never seen leaves blowing around quite like this. The leaves were really a little more distraction than she was ready for. Had I, foreseen, uh, had I foreseen the gust of wind, I would have stopped the training for a minute, giving her a chance to check off the leaves before resuming training. This puppy is Jax. He is performing some tight about turns both to the left and the right. We've already discussed the left turn in Piper's video, but this would be a good place to talk about the right about turn, where the puppy is healing around to the outside of the handler. Just like our left about turns, an about turn to the right is not easy to master. To turn to the outside, a puppy needs to speed up and move quickly to get around the handler. We do a lot of outside circles with our slower pu puppies in particular, as it encourages them to move quicker. With the faster puppies like Jax, we still practice the outside turns just to keep them balanced and to practice staying on the correct side of us. The about turns in both directions improve greatly between 10 and 11 weeks. Jax, however, as has been mentioned, is already to the 11 week mark prior to 10 weeks. We teach these tight turns to puppies not only so that they can stay in heel position when we turn, more importantly, we teach this skill because of the internal qualities it builds. Those qualities are confidence, self-control, focus, and a proper attitude toward a person. Healing is fun, and turning keeps it interesting, provides challenge, and contributes towards building these important internal qualities. Here is Jack's healing up our driveway. This long heel was probably a bit much for him. He lost focus once we got close to Jenna behind the camera. This long of a healing pattern with intense focus should only be used for on an occasion. We don't repeat this long of a sequence until puppies are much older in general. If we did, they would lose motivation. Puppies need to feel as if a reward could come at any time if they are to continue loving their work. Rewards can only be discontinued when the puppies are thoroughly trained. Here is Titus. We're gonna talk a bit here about how we teach these puppies to heal. Positive reinforcement is key, along with keeping it fun and working heavy on the basics. At just over six weeks, we teach the most important thing that any puppy can learn, and that is focus and eye contact. We begin teaching this during our mealtime manners routine, which will be discussed in more detail in another video. Then we begin our floor work, which is before puppies are six and a half weeks old. The first step on the floor is to reward while a puppy simply sits on the floor and gives eye contact. After practicing this a session or two, we tempt them to look at a handful of food. To get their reward, they must look away from the food and look to us. There is no command. We reward them repeatedly just for sitting still and maintaining eye contact in spite of the food being waved around. Once this is solid, we move to the other side, to the side of the puppy and continue rewarding simply for sitting still with eye contact. The next step is rewarding for one step while maintaining eye contact. Each of the steps in our healing program is practiced hundreds of times before we move to the next step. We gradually increase the criteria from a single step to two and then three and so forth. Next is Titus healing for a long stretch. Getting to this point takes time and in fact, 
Some of our puppies aren't ready for this level of focus, even if they stay until 12 or 13 weeks. We don't push them. Also, we never forget the basics. We continue to occasionally reward puppies after short amounts of healing. Even Titus at his level is occasionally rewarded for just one step. This keeps them focused, anticipating that the reward could come at any time. As puppies move through our program, we add more steps, changes in speeds, turns, and so forth. All this is done within the context of making healing a game for the puppy. Next, we have Heidi. Notice that Heidi was getting herself into heel position. I pointed to the side and told her right here, and she knew how to find heel position. This skill is one that is usually not solid at 10 weeks, but it is a very helpful skill for those families leaving their puppies until 11 weeks of age. Having a dog that knows how to get themselves back into heel position after having some free time makes a walk much easier for the handler. Free time out in the world is extremely important to puppies. They need to investigate their world, be socialized, be exposed to a wide variety of places and people, and learn how to interact with all types of environments. To do this, a puppy needs the freedom to focus on their surroundings. Walks with young puppies should alternate between periods of training and periods of free exploring. I release my puppies to explore with an okay, and then signal that it is time to train again or to just walk forward with a point of a finger and saying, right here, to get my puppy back at my side and ready to move. In this next se section of the video, Heidi is healing on our driveway. The driveway is not new to her, so she is capable of focusing on me for a period of time. If she were in a new place, we would do focus healing only that while there were no overwhelming distractions. Starting at 11 weeks, we take our puppies in view of a busy highway to train. Most of them spend far more train acclimating to the surroundings than they spend in training. However, gradually, as they become confident in particular places, I begin asking them to focus more on me. Again, we don't push our puppies. We let them acclimate at their own pace with lots of rewards and with an upbeat, isn't this fun attitude. Last, but certainly not least, we have Lucy. She is one of our more driven puppies who absolutely loves to heal. She works really hard to stay in place and you can almost feel the energy that she's putting into staying right next to me and earning her reward. Much of this drive is due to our view on how to handle mistakes. I do not expect perfection. In a minute, you'll see Lucy take a quick trip to say hello to Jenna behind the camera in between healing events. That's okay at this age. Puppies need a break and she chooses to take her break after I had released and rewarded her. Then she came back and was ready to go again. Also, as you can see, Lucy's healing is a bit crooked on the video. I'm careful not to lessen her love of her work by fo focusing on her shortcoming. Instead, I focus on her successes. I will gradually move her, her toward being straight with various positive reinforcement techniques. However, unlike many trainers, we do not set our puppies up for failure just to punish them or even to call attention to their mistakes. Lucy's problem of healing crooked is because she tends to want to get out in front of me. Almost all puppies do this at times, especially the most energetic ones. We fix this by teaching them to control themselves and slow down and by encouraging them to keep their body turned more toward the left. We mentioned a couple of positive reinforcement techniques for slowing puppies down in Iris's videos, such as left about turns and slow healing. We encourage puppies to turn to the left simply by a reward placement. Give them their reward to their left and they will naturally want to turn their bodies more toward their left. look back at some short clips of each of our puppies as we wrap up this video. As we do, I want to emphasize that the incredible healing skill that these puppies have is just a byproduct of our most important training objectives. Our main goal in training our young puppies is to develop inner qualities, focus, self-control, confidence, motivation to work for a person, respect for a person, and trust in a person are some of the internal attributes that positive reinforcement healing lessons will develop. As we teach our puppies to walk at our side, we are also building these very important inner qualities that will affect every other aspect of a puppy's life. I think the internal quality that shows itself most clearly in these healing, healing exercises is trust. Just think of the trust it would require for you to walk without looking where you are going, but instead to look intensely at another person while trusting them not to run you into something. That is trust. 
hope you've enjoyed this video. We have other videos on sits, downs, stays, and recalls. Check them out. Thank you for watching.